Okay, so let's get started here. All right, so day 12. Uh, the chat in Discord has the, um, under our OSC apprenticeship, we've got the link to the current doc. So let's see where we are on that. Um, day 12, build coming together, both in CAD and in the, in the workshop. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. So there's uh, Trello. So are we migrating to Trello to, <clears throat> is that in active use right now? So we should start, maybe update us on where we're at with that. So it's, it's in active use right now, but just for, at a high level for the projects, it's not necessarily to, to deal with any of the stuff that we're doing here locally, day to day. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we can post updates there as well on that, but it's, that's kind of mm -hmm. what it's used for now. It's keeping tabs on all the bigger pieces of Mm -hmm. And what projects are seeded yet so far at this point? Um, product development, yeah. IT infrastructure, business development? Yeah, and then within uh, the product development, there's a, a bunch of stuff. Um, within some of the other things, the stuff we built out. Yeah, yeah, okay. So, so pretty much big level stuff. That's good. Um, sounds like that could help. Let's see if people <coughs> adopt that. Uh, and if that sticks, if it sticks, we use it. That's the basic policy. Kind of test things out, see how it works with teams, and and then whatever sticks ends up being used. Right. Yeah. Um, so uh, just one thing, kind of housekeeping is, so can you mention about maybe collaborative cooking to save time on cooking? Is there a need for that? And how do we address that? Should we go forward with that? Because it's pretty much yeah, up to you guys. Mm -hmm. So you guys are doing that? Oh, that's cool. Oh, great. And then house rules, you mentioned. What house rules are desirable? Let's see, uh, HabLab house rules. That's a good, uh, let's see. Should we put that up as a, as a wiki page? Uh, does it exist? HabLab house rules. That's a good one. Uh, house guidelines or house rules. <laughs> What's the one that you wanted to point out? Uh, quiet time, probably. Quiet time. What's quiet time officially for, for the hub lab? Meaning that oh, kind of keep it no. keep it low. And people want to sleep. There isn't no there isn't issue. Quiet time. Um, Usually, most people are out of the common area by like ten o'clock. But even if people do stay, it's not like mm -hmm. people. That's good. Yeah. As long as you guys are okay with it. Because I know it's not. I, I thought we were actually kind of loud some of this. Yeah. <laughs> as long as nobody's complaining. Yeah. Ken, what other thoughts did you have in mind on that? Cleaning and sweeping. So, um, how do we do that? Uh, we have Jeff. That's that. I was thinking maybe uh, once a week or once a week clean, maybe. Has the organized the people just swarm on that or allocate roles or? <laughs> so, you know, I'll. I try to pick up on myself. Like I, I know there's some larger that like sweeping the whole area or kind of reorganizing things because things get messy throughout the week while we're working. Um, um, I think the swarm kind of <laughs> the swarm does kind of work once one person starts cleaning and people usually uh, jump in once they see that Yeah, if we put up. Set time. That Set time for Saturday or, or sometime whenever during the week. What's a good time? Uh, I, I would have thought maybe Sunday. Yeah, because Wednesday, like Wednesday, Thursday, we have enterprise sessions, so we get right out of that into that, and then after the workshop, it's like we're trying to sit down and cook dinner, <laughs> and then yeah. you know, kind of. Any particular time you guys want to set up for that, or? Okay. 
well, maybe you could think about it. So HabLab rules, I'll just add that to the, um, I'm going to add that to day 12, just in the index there. Uh, house rules, yeah. Okay, oh, so one comment about OSC Linux is that the current iteration of V2 is never, has never really been finished to, to production. It was still kind of in testing. The guy who's, who's working on that hasn't, haven't really heard back from them. So that's a live thing. We can uh, optimize in terms of all the software, all the part libraries that we use, like all the plugins that we use within each software. Because there's, that's the whole point. There's plugins we use just about for everything. Like for example, Inkscape, there's DXF to G-code where we generate cutting files from Inkscape, or in FreeCAD we have a bunch of part libraries, or where else? Uh, those are the two main things, but some other details where we have preloaded part libraries, like including the, like once we have the, the finalized sweet home, uh, that, like libraries that we, like our sweet home distribution has the part libraries pre-built so you don't have to download them, like that kind of stuff. For that reason, the OC Linux is quite useful to get everybody on the same page. That it's a, it's a user-friendly way for everybody to work on a modern distribution. The V1 has got all the software, but it doesn't have all the modern stuff. Plus, uh, we want to go back to some old things like Lulzbot Cura, legacy, some certain legacy versions that are just better for what we do, like Lulzbot Cura or FreeCAD 16 that are custom installed. So it's once, a, once again a package that everyone has the full environment and the advanced stuff like FreeCAD, the modern FreeCAD, with FreeCAD 19 for advanced power users. Um, but just just for reference, we still need to, I don't know if we have any energy within the group here, but, but to get uh, either take off where we left off on the Mint and finish that off. And the thing, thing there was just some details about cleaning that distribution up uh, to make it work, but it's, just calling out there that that's a that's a task that still needs to be pretty much finalized because right now we're not really using like I'm not really promoting 2.0. There's still some some bugs in there, some little details. If you install it, it's not fully operational. It mostly works. I use it, but there's some details. Um, yeah. Regarding uh, so the discussion on FreeCAD 16 versus latest, yeah, there's a good wiki page on that. I added some to it, but I think maybe we can uh, collaborate on a. I'll just agree to when we collaborate, use 16. When we're doing more advanced things, use 19. I, I would say, can we agree to that? Because I think part of the thing is like I'm looking at how do we teach the FreeCAD rapidly, and, and also okay, there's base basics of FreeCAD that we all want to learn rapidly, and. I think there's a lot of learning there too. I think uh, how do we teach that effectively? Because there is a very basic workflow. I think we can. I'm not teaching this effectively. I don't think like we we gotta just upgrade uh, up our game on that. Because I feel like there's still things being missed. Like how do we how do we simply uh, get the quality up of that teaching? But part of it would be to get into uh, that when we're collaborating, just stick to that. So there are no the, none of those interface issues. Like say, you know, it came out for me when we were collaborating on a screen share already. It's like, uh, say I was using 19, now I had to go back to 16 because I'm super used to it. So there should be one thing that everybody is robust on. It's like you touch somebody else's computer, you can work on it as if it were your own kind of deal. I mean, that level. So when we are working in teams or helping somebody else or teaching somebody, uh, that's not an issue. Like, say, take take the example of <coughs> remote teaching classes. Like, say, a screen share where you know, that could be a product in charge for that. You can actually be teaching people remotely, but for that you have to um, make sure that everything is the same, uniform, so that it, just the learning onboarding time for everybody is is reduced. Um, so, yeah, can can we try that then? Um, whenever we're collaborating, try to stick to 16. But when we're not, when we're using advanced stuff or otherwise, we're welcome to use everything else. But so it really fit. It really de depends on what's the workflow we're using. If it's large scale collaboration, you got to keep the barriers down, and that's that's the simpler, uh, simpler software. So I'd like to call out for that. Um, I think it's a good idea. Like just. Using 16 to teach, since you kind of already have the material there, maybe it just needs to be a little bit more detailed, like 
Yeah, we talked about more the details. Two, the two workbenches, talk about um, constraining, because that, that gets to be important when you're trying to get something exactly right. But like, just getting a part at first is, is good. And then if they want to move on, if the person wants to move on to do other things in 19, there should be some things for that as well. Maybe they can just do it on their own unless they actually understand free kick. Because that's, that's kind of how I felt it was. Like, if I didn't understand 16, it would have been harder to get 19 under, under my belt. Yeah, and that's the thing. In, so. Right. It's like onboarding and get to a certain level. But, I mean, at the minimum level, I feel like... All the stuff we learn in FreeCAD, there's like the big picture items are missing. Like some some of that workflow is missing, and that's what we need to teach the collaborative workflow, not the fact that six nineteen is better for technical development than sixteen. Right. It's that sixteen is part of a more integrated infrastructure that allows the whole world to collaborate. So my and I wrote that down in the FreeCAD sixteen versus latest wiki page is that for, if you want collaborative workflow. 16 is simply a superior tool for what we want to do. If you want to do otherwise, if you want to do advanced workflows, then 19 is superior, but it each have their purpose. So depending on what we're doing, we need to use the best tool for that. Um, I want to try to see if uh, maybe this this morning, like uh, we can do the, the screen share or like just collaborative, like it could either be just screen, screen share or the actual remote desktop control. I want to make sure that each of you have a, can handle the basic process. Like these are all the core things we always do uh, for large collaborative workflow. So that this house here that, that we're working on, it's moving along. Um, so what, what are but we? that we we just accelerate that. So maybe like let's break up into that, but let's not do that yet. Um, I wanted to do once again just like on the house. There's a number of basics. If we cover those, then any person off the street, like what's the minimum number of points? I wrote down 22 already. But what is the minimum number of points you need to absolutely need to communicate for somebody walking off the street who's got the basic FreeCAD workflow to generate what's on the bottom right hand corner of page one, right? That's a, I mean, that right there is a good buildable you know advanced in some ways advanced design it's good it's it's quality stuff it's buildable it's you know we've built uh, similar and so forth what does it take let's try to break this problem down is what is the minimum set of information we need because i feel like right now we're missing stuff st st i mean because i think it's hard to determine which are essential elements and which are not or maybe it's it's so many of them that when we actually look at it and break it down into the individual parts, it turns out there's not like 22 or even like 100, like, you know, 100, that's getting to, you know, you got to study that for a little bit. Maybe it's like li literally like 500 or 200, 300, I don't know. But let's try to break it down to the minimum number. I, I'd like to see that maybe... Well, I don't know the answer to so that. I hope it's under 100. Sketcher, part designer, constraints, padding, extruding, feature on feature. Those are just the ones out the top of my top cap. Right, top so top that's top. for the... Ma so there's slide four, mastering basics of FreeCAD. Let's... Okay, so you know, are, write those things down. Are, um, are you wanting to share your screen, Marchin, or no? Yeah, let's, let's share it. So... I think page page three and four. Let's try to get this. So let's work on three. Let's maybe do the Mastering Basics Freak Out. For the Mastering Basics Freak Out, what I wanted to do is just like five minutes, ten minutes with each, with each of you. I want to see where you're at exactly and what gaps, like as we go through that process, we say, what gaps do you have? Can you start a sketch? Can you move a plane? Can you rotate? Can you download? Can you upload? Can you do version history? There's a bunch of little things. Each of them is a simplistic bit depth one item. It's like anyone could te could be taught that. But altogether, because there's a number of them, this is where we're human and we're like bit one depth individuals. Uh, we're like, can only think of one thing at a time. So when it combines to a bunch of parts, it's hard to keep track of all of it. But, but the hope is you write it all down explicitly and it can go through that checklist and once you 
internalize that entire checklist, the process is seamless and we collaborate like crazy to the point that uh, a house like this, like I believe that if we start with a house like that and everyone's internalized the free cut basics and the design basics, I mean, this is a day exercise. Uh, let's see, like couple, I'd say couple hours per module. So, uh, and a couple hours, yeah, two hours per module, like just to go through mechanics of, okay, you draw it all up in a skeleton and stuff like that. It's literally, it can go down to 10 minutes. Like the simpler modules are 10 minutes, but let's say it, it takes an hour or two. But if we have like, say eight people working on that, how long does it take to, to get to where we are right now? If we are masters of FreeCAD workflow and those hundred or so, I'm hoping we can, we can get it down to less than a hundred bits of information required but maybe there's more. Maybe like I'm completely missing it because I'm in, I kind of live in this. So I forget that, oh, well, you also need to know this. You also need to know that. But let's let's capture that and maybe at different levels, like this is fundamental knowledge, like universal knowledge, like there's two by four lumber, you know, like that kind of stuff. There's a specific design knowledge for the house. There's specific design knowledge for how we think about the house design, stuff like that. But let's try to capture this because the idea here is that anyone can now take this in the absolute minimum time. They learn all the things about this to, to be able to design their own. And everything else falls out of that. Whatever we do from building to gaming to educating to enterprising, uh, and the, the core is the product there still. Uh, and we talk, if we talk about distributed production, we're distributing that knowledge far and wide as to be implemented in open source micro factories worldwide. So we talk about the dream of ever getting a, a bunch of this replicated, not just like one here and one there, uh, then we have to talk about clear on board, like clear, just breaking this problem down, the essence of open source, which is breaking a problem down into very small bite-sized chunks that we can then then quality control against and, and do this. So for example, just to give you an example, like what, what made me think like this, like, okay, so awesome, we've got that first interior wall module. Well, that interior wall module, not sure who did that. Who did that interior wall module? Um, but whoever did that, that's two by sixes. So no, all the interior modules are two by fours, for example. So that's that one bit of information that's missing from that being actually correct. Uh, so things like that, but I think we can um, identify these things so that at the point where we have that list, Everything goes in there is quality controlled, at least from the technical design aspect. So I guess the, the biggest important, biggest thing about mastering basics is the technical design basics of which, because we're modular, and, I mean, we're effectively four by eight panels. That's like bit one. From that, you can pretty much derive, well, there's four by eight and four by nine. You can derive like so much from that when you <coughs> apply basic design thinking to it. Uh, but let's let's go through this real quick and actually answer those questions. And if we don't know the answers to the questions, we should know to where to find the answers to those questions. In other words, the organization of this information has to be such that that's doable. Otherwise, we'll never bury ourselves out of basic, uh, into more complex design as larger teams. If we don't know how, how to do something, which is fine, I mean, ideally, all the information is available so that you know where to find it and go from there. So let's let's just go through uh, through some of these. Like this is the stuff that at this point we're 22. So I'm going to ask you, we go through these 22 and tell me what else belongs in this list? What is 23 through 100 that we're missing? Okay, so what is the what is the outer size of the house framing? Once you build the house, what's the dimensions like on the footprint? What is that? Sure. That's it. By 16. What's the what's the size of the first story wall modules without sheeting? Length with height. Four by nine. Five inches. And it's not. And it's not nine. It's three eighths inches below nine because that's what pre-cut studs come in. 
So technically speaking, when we design these, we go 4 by 107 and 5 eighths, which is 107.625, or 6 to, yes, which means 3 eighths under the full length. That's just what, this is the USA. Maybe it's different in other countries. It probably is. This is just what happens in the U.S. You've got 3 eighths inch under the full 9 footer. We've got 9 foot for the first floor, just about. So remember that part. That bit of that's that. But that's like three bits of information. It's three numbers you gotta do. So it's you got 32 by 16 for the first one. So it's like if you actually count like the number of bits, <laughs> if you represent one piece of information by a bit, we're at five bits right now. Okay, what's the size of the second story wall modules? Once again, without cheating. Because we didn't, let's not worry about that yet. Eight and three quarters by four. Once again, um, just the second story wall modules, not so plate, not like top, top, whatever, just the module. There's so plates too, top plates too. Just the wall module. Right, exactly, exactly. And th those are all the things we need to know as we get to the real build. So it's 48 inches by 95 and 5 eighths inches by what? It's exterior, 5.5. Yeah. 3.5. Yeah, by 5.5 inches. Second story exterior. What is the size of first story interior wall modules? Before we answer that, for some of these things, where would we, where would we look if we didn't know it? How would we figure some of this out? Sorry, I didn't hear that. Repeat the question. Where, suppose we didn't know the previous answer, where would we be looking? How would you figure that out? If you don't would know you the answer, the, would, the first place I would look at is the FreeCAD files or the design doc, which is... Okay. Uh, there's a house design guide which shows the high-level house designs work that we do. So house design guide, that's a good question. Uh, but the first thing, the ultimate truth has to be in the CAD. If the CAD does not reflect the reality, that's that's BS CAD. That's not LOD 500 CAD. Everything ultimately goes into the CAD. So, but take a look at the CDCO home design guide. And here we better have some stuff about that. So I would look into the index. And this is not anywhere complete, but um, build techniques, so we got modular design, what's the dimensions? It doesn't say. You start with a 16 by 32. The there is so actually that's these are good good questions. So if you don't know, one place you look at is this design guide. If you don't know answers, there's another one from 2016. Um, so maybe uh, where do we? So the, the key, <clears throat> I would say the key link here, there's two, two documents. One is the house design guide, which is super general. And then there's the OBI building book from 2016, which, but that's like we're, because it's the old design, we're, we're not necessarily going back there, but, but it does have the, the right size there, house design guide.
and then OBI building book. So I would look on the wiki OBI building book. And that's the link. So so here, but that's for CD Cajon 1. That's what it looked like when we built it first. Right now you saw it, it looks a little different. But here we've got um, in the table of contents, do you, can you see things like, okay, here's the wall modules. Uh, and this is, I think, more like design criteria. Um, this is, so for example, for wood walls, conceptual design, dimensions and shape. You can read a lot more about this. This is all relevant. This is still highly relevant. I mean, this, but this is half the document. We got to this. And then we start thinking it's like pretty much halfway of it between getting burned out and thinking about the next model and COVID, we said, okay, uh, this is deprecated. It will be updated for the CD Go Home 2, and that's Katarina's work. She's going to work on getting the proper information architecture for this, but it's some of the tasks in front of us. Um, so these are the two pieces of information, but it doesn't, this doesn't address the question directly, how do you find those dimensions? Those dimensions got to be in the CAD that we're working on right now. Now, we've been working for a few days on it, going through those rigors of all those dimensions, so it's got to be in there. If not, we're like doing nonsensical work. So, uh, so for, yeah. for showing this stuff to other people, we should, we should mention those three things. I, mean, we could, I can make a separate box that says, yes. look at the CAD or look at you. Okay. Yes, and the Sweet Home CAD used to be the most updated, and it does still have the right size. It should have the right sizes in general, like the, the wall heights. We never changed that. I mean, you, you've got stock lumber. The size has to end up 9 foot minus 3 eighths inch and 8 foot minus 3 eighths inch. That's never changed. That's, that's always been there. Um, what's the size? Of, okay, so let's write the answer down here. What's the size of the first story interior wall modules? So we got 48 inch, definitely, for standard ones, because they're partial ones. Um, and also the 5 eighths for the first story, and then by 3.5? So the logical answer would be it would be the same as the, Just the, the wall heights. Mm -hmm. However, there's one detail there in that the interior wall modules don't sit on a, on, on a sill plate. So they're going to be 1.5 inches taller. So it's, it's not actually a not non-trivial question. Um, we're doing a, and then we go over it. Maybe we didn't, I don't think we even went through the rigor of that answer. We implied it by saying there's a, there's a sill plate, and then there's also a top plate on top before the, the joists of the second floor platform. But you want to make sure that when you stand that module up, you don't hit the ceiling first, so keep it a little lower. So let's just make it one and a half inches, just basically the additional height of the, the bottom plate. We have to expand those. Otherwise, the gap up there is, is three inches. And that's 1.5 and then 1.5 for the thickness of the two by fours. Yeah, yeah, for the bottom plate, for the top plate that you're reaching to. But the best. For now, I'd say we keep them to to 1.5 taller than what we had before, and then we close up that little gap. But if that's the case, and let's think about it for a second. So now we're introducing more information. Like ideally, you'd have it be equal, and you have to attach attach the thing, these things to ultimately to the underside of the joists it's most convenient the closer you are to the joist the easier it is to make that attachment so we can call it a day say yeah it's just 1.5 larger leave enough space that we know we can tilt that module up without hitting the ceiling that's kind of the main concern for us um, so let's call it let's look at uh, do we have any of these drawn up already 
let's verify it. So for that, we go to the CAD and maybe there's more information there. So we go to SH2 CAD. And do we have anyone? So that's after 20, after 24. So 24 and up, we got the interior modules. So what's happened here? Second floor exterior. That's not, no, that's not second floor exterior. That's, this is labeled incorrectly here because that's not, it's not second floor exterior if it's what's the number 20 it's getting a little hairy there like tw 24 yeah 24 and up is second st story exterior first floor interior see all those ones are still empty so we actually never you know, if you didn't know the answer to that there's not not a good way to find out at least from the CAD because we haven't done any of these the, all the FCSTD ones are still open and perhaps that's because we're missing that one piece of information or a few pieces of information on that maybe people weren't able to do it so I think getting clear on this here is good let's make them um, uh, the limit of what we can make them is would be like to keep it safe one inch one inch below the ceiling I think let's just keep it one and a half inches because that means we think about okay it's just an extra extra uh, sill plate left uh, length that we add to the height. So let's call it, so if we had the 107.58 before, which is effectively 108, um, do 109. And let's not do these fra crazy fractional numbers. Well, if we use a 2 by, we can cut those lengths as far as the, the height of the wall module to be whatever we need so now we don't have to work with those fractional numbers just to keep things simpler so we should call it at the end of the day 1.5 inches below uh, it's kind of hand waving because those little fractional dimensions are because of the inaccuracies of the entire system so we're kind of hand waving a little here but let's call it if it's 108 add 1 1.5 to it so call it 109.5 inches and then because we can, we don't have, if you were to make that out of a nine footer, you have, there is no regular, no stuff you buy off the shelf that gets you to this dimension here that we need. So we just cut it to whatever we need. So let's cut it to a round number, which is easier. So let's do 109.5 as far as the overall width, overall height. And then what's the width? The, the depth of the module. Three point five inches. Yeah, that's two by fours. Okay. Now, what's the size of the second story interior wall modules? For this, for this last one, should we like make a note of uh, the rationale for the height just so that we remember? Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's in the design guide, right? Like the the overall. Should go in a design guide. That's where it should should go into. It's in the house design guide. It's probably not there. But in a so there's a the third doc is the wall modules design guide. So if you go to uh, seed home two in the conceptual that should be under conceptual design. So wall module design guide. That's I think all these details are actually in there. This is the more specific one for just really focusing on on this one. So if you look at and there's a bunch of bunch of pages, too many pages in there, but this is what this was talking about here. Yeah, I mean it's in here, actually. So that's actually uh, if you go in here to page wall panel 101, which we covered like one in one of the oh, what happened to it uh, wall panel 101 slide, which we covered in one of the early days, um, but probably at that time maybe that didn't make any sense. Yeah, but now you can review that and go back to it and say, yo, it's all back there. But maybe it's TMI right now. It's like we got load downloaded with too much information, but it's in here. Should be in there. If it's not, put it in there. So I, I'd say um, actually the best, <clears throat> most directly relevant link Uh, under under this page 
Okay, so how's the so wall module design guide? There. And ideally, if somebody watches this video, if we if we were to have a full time processor of these videos and all this info, a curriculum writer this gets canned into official curriculum submitted to UMKC to for us to profess at USK, UMKC uh, with a collaboration there. That's that's one of the outcomes here. We, we're going to clean this up, take it, and mm -hmm. get certified to teach, basically approved, like that this could become credit granting possibility that people at UMKC can take so that's in progress. Like the Jesse and the people from UMKC, and Brian are highly interested in that. There's Brian suggesting that the first thing we do is get get this accredited and stuff like that. So clean it up and because this could cl classify in a lot of different areas. Like here's design, uh, could be an enterprise, it could be in programming. Like we talk about devising the FreeCAD designers and things like that. There's a lot of content in here. And this UMKC Hmm? University of Missouri, Kansas City. That's where they have the, and that could relate to, okay, so at UMKC you've got the augmented reality, virtual reality center, so we can talk about, once we nail all this down, talk about full immersive augmented reality training that gets you to learn this fast. Maybe that's the secret, secret tool we need right, well, of course we would need it right now if we had that, to probably augment our learning. That's the that's the idea. So that's that. Going on to what's the size of the second story interior wall modules? What's the answer to that? Now this is for the standard ones because of course there's custom ones on corners that may be shorter and stuff. So what is the answer to that? Forty eight inches by What's the height? There's a top plate up there. These are shorter than nine. They're they're in the eight foot range. Yeah, uh, we could do that. That's even better. And that means that we're theoretically 1.5 inches away from the ceiling because there's a top plate on top of the second story exterior modules. However, there's also a ceiling, which is going to be 3A, so we're a little less than 1.5. So yes, that's perfect. If we have enough space, make sure we don't hit the ceiling when we stand these up. By, what's the depth? Three point five. Yeah. What's the size of the foundation pad? So actually, this is uh, one detail to there because uh, the pad is thirty-two by sixteen to the insulation. Because the outside of the house goes over the insulation, so that's that's like a little. The, the pad is actually, if you look at the detail, it must be after the insulation. The insulation is two inches thick. Um, so that's a kind of a trick question. To the concrete, what is the size of the foundation pad? No, to the to the insulation, because that's that answer is easy. That's a 32 by 16 to the outside of the insulation. You see the distinction there? So it's 16 by 32 feet. Yeah, so that after you have the the outside sheathing, the sheathing because it drops down an inch, it can go over the insulation without getting the water under the insulation. So it has to drip, dribble over the outside. I.e., if the concrete was 16 by 32, this would be dribbling onto the 
insulation, so we'd have to have another step there where the water would have to be taken to the outside. You see like a step um, if the insulation were there. So that detail means that we need to have the, in, the dimensions to the outside of the insulation to be 16 by 32. Okay, now more fundamental question. What's the size of a 2 by 4? So a 2 by 4 standard piece of lumber. When, it, when you hear that in America, that's kind of inside knowledge, but that's the that's the 1.5 by 3.5 um, by what? By the next question is pre-cut, but the, just a two by when you get a two by four, not a pre-cut two by four. Well, the regular is 96. This comes up from the store. And typically this is 96, maybe like an eighth inch or a quarter inch bigger. So a lot of times you have to cut it to be exactly, like if you cut in the top plate of, that's 48, you got to do two cuts, not one cut. You gotta, first you got to get you gotta get one of those pieces to length if it's a slightly over. What it's about never like a, under. A builder mini course or, or something on the wiki yeah. just to compile all this demo. Yeah, start it. Um, builder crash course. This is kind of stuff we want to cover. Yeah, I, this kind of checklist we really got to have. This is like maybe later in the game. But yeah, these basics here. Um, so 1.5 by 3.5 by 96. So what's the size? Well, let's make that into a separate question here. So that's the answer there. 2 by 4 pre-cut. Answer. I'm not sure what a pre-cut, what, what does that mean, a pre-cut? Pre-cut stud. So that's what we're working with. We're working, there's, um, out in the piles, there's, a, there's various types of lumber. There's pre-cut studs and there's regular studs. Those come in 8-foot versions and 9-foot versions, and actually also 10-foot versions, but we don't really use 10-footers. We just got 10-footers because they were cheaper than 9-footers when we were buying them. Uh, but what's relevant to here is two by fours or whatever lumber that's eight feet and then eight eight foot pre-cut and then nine foot pre-cut. Pre-cut is the stuff we've been talking about all the time. It's three inches shorter or a little more than three inches shorter so that when you put top and bottom plate onto the wall module you get exactly the eight or nine feet minus that three eighths inches. So that's that's for our purpose, pre-cut for our purposes though. It's not like you can go that's and buy it out the store. No, no, no. That's cut because we're building a certain no, style pre of wall. The pre-cuts are a standard U.S.-wide thing. You buy pre-cuts at the at the store. So you go to Menards. Okay. So maybe maybe show another thing here. So you go to the Seed Home Two page. Yeah. So you wanna. So I mentioned about reconciling CAD, BOM, and build instructions. So let's show how we find it. So where is the BOM? It's in the development template. This is the BOM. You can click on it. And absolute complete budget of all that we're doing here that's out in the workshop and everywhere else is in this spreadsheet. It's a big one. The one you want to look at is things like the first Menards order way down. Like um, So first Menards order. So you can look at things like Two by there's different items. Two by six, ninety-two and five eighths. Um, these are the pre-cut. They would be ninety-six if they were not pre-cut. But this is a thing you get from the store. You go to Menards, and and the links are in the other spreadsheet. But if you go to Menards, you go and you search for that part number. So this is. Uh, this is what we're talking about, this item. You get this right off the shelf. So 2 by 6, 92 and 5 eighths, which is some weird dimension. Well, that's called a pre-cut. Pre-cut to fit, so once you put the top and bottom plate, it's actually 8 feet. Right? So about 93 plus 3 is 96. 
it's only the fences that you're going to construct with this wood, but you're also going to construct like two it by six. You, you, you need two by six as well to make like a frame, so it, it's accounted for already. That's why the, why it's pre-cut. Yes. Okay. That's because this is standard U.S. construction. Everyone gets these standard eight foot or nine foot wall sizes, but if you know the construction, it's you always have a bottom and top plate, so it always and they already they do this for the industry so that every the carpenter same. out there saves one cut on right. a house. Right. So on each piece of wood that you need to use to build a frame. Yes. That's a lot of work that's cut for you. Yeah. For so you got, you know, like whatever, like a thousand pieces or you know, five hundred cuts that you're you're saving a few hours. Um sorry, can you yes. help me with this um my screen keeps going green. Just yeah. refresh. I, I do restart, but like, it's the same. It doesn't match up. Uh, if you look at uh, graphics drivers, and it's all the way to graphics drivers. Yeah, I click. <laughs> okay, I click, and then I uh, restart it. Yeah, I oh, don't know. Um, what do we do about that? I'm not sure how much we can help right now. Just try restarting. Um, but. What are you, are you just on the Mac? Yeah. I would try OSC Linux. You can update Discord and see if there's a later version. Uh, I would go to OSC Linux because it's a lightweight thing. OSC Linux 1 is pretty lightweight, so if you run it off the USB, you're running the Linux. Not, you can do, it's right off the USB, and that should work. It, we never seen it not work uh, in that kind of manner where you've got drivers that typically it works. Um, or install another lightweight, like very light, minimal <laughs> distribution. That's another story, but okay. Um, okay, so pre-cut studs, is a, that's a technical term to show what a regular one looks like. So if you go to dimensional lumber here, so you can study this and yeah, so here they have 2x4 construction framing lumber, and here they have 2x4 pre-cut studs and other stuff. So under regular lumber, this should be here, just regular 8 feet, 9 feet, 10 feet. The pre-cut means that it's got that, those 3 on inches nominally cut off. So here you get length 8, and they say that it's 8 feet. So that's the difference there. Uh, that's basics here, so pre-cuts here, yeah, feel free to edit that, size of a 2x4 pre-cut, it's going to be 1.5 by 3.5 by 92 and 5 eighths. What's the size of a 2x6? 1.5596 versus exactly that. Yes. So, what lumber is used for headers? <coughs> what kind of lumber? Yes, 2 by 12s. What is their size? No, they're 11 and a quarter. That's yeah. a tricky one. I, yeah. <laughs> that was messed up. Now, okay, so what we noticed in our d build is that all of our 2x12s happen to be 11.5. They're quarter inch off well, intended dimensions. I think they vary. There's a lot that are 11 and a quarter. Okay, so we've got, <laughs> but we've got some that are just a quarter off. What does that mean for the build? We're going to have to caulk those gaps because that's what, that's what happened. <laughs> That's all. That means we put a put sill plate on top of the the top plate, so that is going to squeeze down like that gap a little bit, and it may even like after everything is said and done, everything may just work out to be equal. But if it's not, we caulk it up. Just caulk it. Um, what is the size of a two by twelve? It's supposed to be one point five by eleven point two five by whatever length. 
what are the three dimensions of structural framing lumber that we use? So what are the three types of lumber we use? The ma main... 2 by 4, 2 by 6, 2 by 12. Yeah. That's it. I, I, I hope we're not using anything else. We're trying to reduce everything else. I don't think we are. Is there too much more? Say again? So, what do you think about um, adding a top plate to the, to the upper floor design? Like... It has it. I'm sorry, I mean, like, underneath the header. Underneath the header, yeah. Uh, it's a... Stuff. Yeah, so for the I think that's our learning. Yeah. Well, how would we do that? Would we lower the window? Would we get two by tens? And just lower the size of those side members. Um, just reduce the size of the well, studs. The windows, the windows go all the way up to the to the header. Uh, okay. In that case, for the large windows, you actually can't if you want to use a two by twelve. We'd have to go to a two by ten. Yeah. And. Uh, or lower the window by an inch and a half. Uh, I think we can lower the window by an inch and a half. And so that may be our learning that it's just too painful to do this. So to do what we're doing, which is not using a, a plate below the header, we're going straight to studs. Um, yeah. Um, we'll take a look at, uh, like, let's not mess with these too much right now. But for the next version, let's say, okay, we'll go back to... Uh, probably lower the window. Okay. Uh, Matt, you had a question? Uh, 2 by 12, is that right? It, it's, it's by 11.25 11.5? Google it. Size of a 2 by 12. Okay. It's a standard. I was just, the I was just hoping there'd be like hmm? some consistency. I was just uh, hoping there'd be consistency with the half inch less that we see at the two by four well, and the two point. by six. It's like people make up all kinds of standards. Yeah, and right. They may or may not make sense. Historically, maybe it made sense. Somehow, how did this ever happen? Um, whatever. Um, right. But a lot of what we talk about is based on industry standards. Like all, just about anything here, outside of the specific OSC OBI editions, are you Google it and you find it. We're building as much on what exists as possible. Now, if we're like 3D right. printing or we're cutting our own dimensional lumber, that's a different story. But if we work from stock material, which we are right now, a lot of this you can Google it and find out. So, okay, so does the framing extend all the way to the corner on the long side or short side of the house? And there's a design rationale behind question behind that too. So uh, what's the answer to that one? On the corners, which corner, long or short, go all the way to the corner? You can look at it in the CAD. We did it, but kind of have to be clear about that. Short side. Long. Well, the, the panel goes off to the corner, but the actual wall modules on the connected on the long side to that panel. Yeah. So the, for the framing, the framing on the long side. The answer there is long side. And why? Because that's where the joists are. You're resting on the long sides. The end sides are not important structurally as much because the joists are not really resting on it. They're, they're resting on the long walls. We're spanning across this long wall. So we want to keep that continuous. So it, would it be possible to do the design of the house with only, um, like, two module types like by just rotating and ch changing which which uh where the long and the short work you can do with one you kind of have to address the corner like we are to make it stiff yeah. but you could use same sizes if you increase the foundation width but that wouldn't work because the two by 12 the 16 footers wouldn't span it anymore mm -hmm. I'm, I'm talking about, so we have a short corner and a long corner. Yeah. And we have, um, like, inverse, or we have, like, a, a mirror effect. Is it possible to create the house without the mirror effect? Um, just by, you know, rotate, you're using those same corners? Or is there some reason that the, you think the mirror effect 
is important for like the structural well, organization? Well, uh, it seems like uh, I, I think the immediate answer is I think this is the only way we could do it. Like, how how would you do it with less parts? Because um, I'm not so seeing as, how we, you would be able uh, to do it. You just um, change which side the long and short corners are on. So you've got, you know, like a corner here, um, and you've got your long side and your short side, right? Like if, if the long side has to meet, you will use, you just rotate them. You change which one the long is on. I'll draw a concept of that. I'm not, I'm not seeing it. Just put it in a Google Doc. I mean, that's that's a good if you think that's a, if that's actually something relevant. Yeah, maybe we just found something out. But uh, just do a simple sketch and but then see if we if this actually works. That way, you wouldn't be able to you wouldn't have to Yeah. At the end of the day, it ha all the requirements have to be met. So if it does work, we'll gladly use it. If we can find that there's actually a way to use less parts, absolutely. Uh, but I, I don't I don't know how to do that right now. Um, okay, uh, we use 2 by 4, 2 by 6, and 2 by 12s. It's long side. What lumber is used for the sill plate? What kind of lumber of the three that we use? Uh, for that, you remember we went over the, the detail of the foundation. So you'd find that in uh, the design, I, I would like to see it under SH2 design. Uh, which is point three. There's details. Uh, it's not there. It should be. No, it is. It's uh, let's see. Foundation. See, Aspen was this one-story model we started with, and then we said, no, we got to do it to two-story because we were going to do this thing initially. Basically, two one floors connected by a hallway. However, turns out at that time we were designing it, the bill of materials for the two-story was 33000 and this was more like 48000 So it's more expensive because you got more foundation and more roof, which are the expensive parts. Um, so, so sorry, it's, we should move that foundation design to here, but so it's under build, build instructions. Um, here you're gonna see the the foundation sill plate. This document describes that. We've seen that before. Uh, so, but what's the answer? Does anyone remember what the sill plate was? Yeah, it was a two by four, and it's the one you want to do is this cross section here, this one. Um, well, is there a dedicated picture of that? It's in these pictures here, this detail. Um, let's click on that one. But it's that. So you see how there's that. That's the detail we went through before. Uh, that's how it looks. So that's the foundation detail there. That's the what we said about the panel dripping over the insulation. So to the outside of the insulation is a 16 and 32 dimension, and there's a two by four here. And because that's two inch insulation, two by four plus two, uh, three point five plus two equals five point five, which is the two by six for the exterior modules. So that's how it works. This is not super standard, and and uh, so the structural engineer wants to look at that. But we know this is good because they already make two by four walls that are called legal. We're doing two by six, so we've got more than required. Therefore, we don't see issues with that. Um, So the answer is two by four. The only other detail is actually it's treated lumber. It's pressure treated lumber, so it's rot resistant. And uh, here in in Menards, you'd go to like under under lumber and boards, dimensional lumber. You'd go for treated, and there's this. You can do product type uh, such as green pressure treated. All well, you'll see. <coughs> Like the green stuff, the stuff that looks like green, uh, that'll be treated lumber stuff, uh, but it's mixed in here. So it's a 
special type you gotta get. You can cedar is natural rot resistant, but that's like twice as expensive. There's ground contact pressure treated lumber like here, where you've got two by fours that are. We got 16 footers, so we got these here. Two by four ground contact pressure treated lumber. So this is rot resistant. It'll last like pretty decent time. Um, the, the regular wood that rots within you know, a few years, like for example the, the picnic table out there that's been there, it rots away. Those are not treated lumbers. How big is the cutout? for the staircase in terms of interior dimension. So we want started going through the staircase so we know how the walls around that look. Um, but the best answer for that is you gotta just look at the CAD and um, our complete model has that. So here what I would do, so we're designing interior modules. You know, all these pieces are hard to remember. Uh, go to the MasterCAD file, download that. So actually do that in real time. Just download this thing and then open it up and read it. Can you read the dimension? What is the actual cutout? Download it and read it and tell me. What's the inner dimensions of the cutout? Look at that, it changed color on us here. Oh, look at that. <laughs> How sweet. So we had this discussion and an update has already been made because thank you who did that, but that's two by four now. That's beautiful. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Um, but what we're interested in, I would go to orthographic view, VO, or just O in 16. You go look at the top and you can read, read those dimensions. See that cutout there? What is it? Well, you know that the spacing of the, the joist is two feet, so you count up. What is that? Two, four, six, eight, ten on center. So it's not ten, it's minus a little bit. It's going to be one and a half inch less than ten if you look at it. So read it, go to measuring thing, put your measuring stick on it. It's going to be one, 1. 1.5 inches lower than ten feet. So just check that. 118.5 about. So, if I didn't say that, can you figure it out? Yeah. Who can tell me the width? Re who can read the width of it? Paul, is there a way you can get me to do the share screen thing so someone can control my screen? Or do we have to quit out of this one? Yeah, unfortunately, it requires switching to Zoom, which yeah, maybe. Kind of disrupts me. Okay, let's continue. <coughs> can somebody give me the same Google Doc? Yeah, we're all on the same Doc. That's good. Um, can someone tell me? getting 41. How are you getting? Let me peek over you. Go well, I got the, uh, I got Yeah, the go into press that orthographic perspective. In FreeCAD there's O and P in FreeCAD 16, orthographic and perspective view. In orthographic view everything looks absolutely square so you, you can measure things more easily. Prince, are you still getting 42 when you do that? Or can anyone else scream out if you have it? So just the inner of the cutout. Okay, sounds good. Now, 
Um, yep, it's 42.5 to the outs to the uh, what is going on there. Let's see what's underneath that. If I'm, I'm gonna hide these modules. So see what I'm doing there. Um, I'm just taking, trying to take a look at this cutout, and this is a logic question. So I hid. So this is looking from the top. So who can tell me if this is correct? Because it's actually not correct, and actually Prince's answer at 42 point. This is a, this is an error. That this beam here, this one, it's too far out. What's supporting the walls back there? It's got to be under the walls. See what I'm talking about? So the walls are sitting like right off it. So there's there's the exterior, the, the plywood, three quarter inch. That's pretty stiff, and that's going to be on top of it. But this this one here should be under the walls. So the actual correct answer is 42.5. Uh, we should have. I can't erase that one because it's the whole thing. So I'll, I'll redo that, but we can make a note. Um, so you don't want this cutout to be not under the wall structure because that's load bearing. Um, that's one thing. And the second thing is if you're walking up the stairs, you don't want to have this, this joist protruding out one and a half inches. Like say you're in the night, you're walking up the stairs, you'll hit that joist. So you want to be smooth. You want to be uh, move that out of the way. Move this uh, in my screen. Move that up one and a half inches. Okay, so we'll say 42.5. Now we've heard the fi the figure 42.5 before, right? That's typically what happens when you subtract the width of an outside wall from 48, our standard dimension. So 48 minus 5.5 is 42.5. So we're used to the number 42.5 here. And let's correct that here. So we said It's 10 feet minus 1.5, so 120 minus 1.5, 118.5 by 42.5 inch. And that will determine things like, okay, what are your wall sizes out there? So you can figure out the interior walls. Okay, what's the thickness of the subfloor on a second floor? You can read it off the CAD. The subfloor is what's, this is called the subfloor, the OSB, not, not OSB, the plywood here. Uh, you can zoom in and read it. Um, can someone read it? It's got to be three quarter because it's got two two foot spans. Uh, it's solid enough to walk on, and then we put a floor on that with the wooden planks we cut up already. Um, so let's the answer to that one is three quarters. That determines how high. That means your second story walls will be on top of that and that's what makes up remember before we had that figure 121.125 for where the second story things are second story z height that includes that three quarter inch plywood includes the, the joists the plywood there's a top plate before that so altogether you've got that that kind of structure it's three quarter inch plywood What's the slab thickness? I don't know, that's kind of looking underground for that, but when we build it, it's like 3.5 or 4 inches. Um, that's, that's if you're building this from scratch. What's the thickness down to the footer? That's 18 inches for the footer. Um, What's the thickness of the insulation? We've been through this. The well, the thickness of the insulation at the foundation. Hmm? Mm -hmm. Two inches. What's the door and window sizes? Hmm. That's determined by BOM. They have a certain nominal size, but the rough opening you have to make a little larger than they are. 
So there's standard standard numbers for that. Right now, what you can do is read it off the CAD because we figured all that. If you go go to go to the BOM and actually the second Menards order is where we got the windows, and they're all in here. So if you say look at the windows. Take for example, you know the second story um, windows, or the windows. No, they're actually first first order. Um, those were all the doors. critical ones are the first Menards order and the second Menards order but the window is here so let's find the window take not even can you find um, water plumbing foundation walls here's the special order and windows under the expenses tab number 18 we got these ones Um, yeah, I could zoom in on that, but, oh yeah, so those weren't Menards, they're called 30, for example, the second story windows are called 36 by 60, um, these ones, if you take a look at that, um, They'll t when you go to the website, they'll tell you this is the rough opening size you need typically, or you look at their installation manual. So right now we've got the correct uh, opening sizes. But so that that answer you could read off the CAD. Uh, so for example, well let's take the first first story here, or we download the individual file before it's input here. That'll be, be like in between all this trim. So if you take a look at that, the rough opening would be thirty-six. No, that's not. That's probably the. We look from the back. Is that thirty-six? Yeah, it is. Rough opening is 36. It happens to be by 42. So <clears throat> that means the nominal size, like the actual size of that window, has to be a little smaller in order to fit in there. But that's that's the rough openings there. So we can say 36 by 42. Um, That's a hard question because you have to look at the bill of materials and then put it into the CAD. But the CAD that we did, uh, it does show it because we, you know, we scraped that to make sure it's accurate. Um, so there's two questions in there. Like there's, um, well, the nom. This is re we have to say. What are the nominal? Because they have a name, like, oh, it's a 36 by uh, 42 window. But its actual size is going to be a little different. And it may or may not correspond to the rough opening. Like, this is like, you got to look at exact window you got. You got to look at its directions. They're going to tell you this is the rough opening you need. So. Like if you're actually doing this, and this this is some of the challenge if you're building this, you you know you're using this design, you want to make sure that when you buy the windows, they're gonna fit. So you look at it, you examine it, and you you make sure you look at it in the specs and and find out what the 
would they recommend for the rough opening? Because there's different window types, all kinds of types of windows, and some some people might say, oh, you need like half an inch of space around the windows. Other manufacturers will say you need a little more or less, whatever. Um, I did not find consistency on that. Like when they say a 36 by 42 window, cool, because that's what the rough opening is. It happens to be the same size as the rough opening for the doors. That wasn't the case. Like if you have a 36 inch door, the rough opening would not be 36. It would be like uh, a little, lar little larger, like, like 30, 38 and a quarter. Oh, two, like two. Like, I mean, how much? Because that's how that's much just. The, do you want to give? Let give. Do you want to? Yeah. So, so for example, the nominal, just to give you how, I mean, this is just a pain, royal pain. Uh, you got a 36 by 80 door, and that does not. It's a nominal. It's just called that. But it does not mean the door is that it does it may mean the door is close to that but it's not the frame of the door so when i said 36 it's got a 38 and a quarter hole there's right. it's got a frame around it so it's pre-framed it's got that and you don't know what that is until you actually go out there and take measurements and that's what i did so i took the measurements and then i verified that they recommend a certain rough opening size if they do some um i think i had to google some like some will have you will show you the rough opening size some may not like this I think these doors and windows uh, some of them had it some didn't so you had to actually measure but I measured anyway to make sure that okay does this agree with the numbers that we have and what's tolerable and stuff like that so you just got to look at the details there that's a I would say that's a very hard question um, but we know like if in the future you get stuck on this you don't want to do too much logic ideally you would find it would go to Home Depot and get the exact same thing we did because it works so if you find the same product number, you're guaranteed to work with the exact design we have. Otherwise, you're going to spend hours like making sure everything fits or redesigning and stuff like that. So, and of course, you can parametrize it to make it easy for any, eventually for any kind of windows door size. But when they tell you whatever size it is, you still can't trust that number because you have to s to understand: is it nominal? Is it the frame size? Is it the rough opening size, etc. So. And I would say my, my experience is like whenever I look at it, it's like, oh, which is it? You have to be very specific. Um, and if you're used to working with a particular kind of window, you might forget that this is really difficult. Perhaps like say you, you, you're a builder and maybe you just get the same window all the time. Maybe it's just like when you talk about the digital model efficiency, this kind of stuff kills it because you go to the store, they tell you it's one thing and it's not. So, if you go digital to, for low cost, uh, this is kind of in a way. Uh, Until you have full digital models, and the manufacturer is not going to get you full digital models, typically. Or maybe we can, some manufacturers will in the future have full digital models, but until that's present, we're just guessing what the, what the size is in real life. Uh, someone said? No, I was just reading, uh, someone was recommending using a metric system. I mean... Yeah, the even if we is, switch to the metric system, we still have to buy the nominal. Yeah, metric doesn't, doesn't match up. metric doesn't address the specific issue, and once again, the answer is both. There's some things that are more convenient. Metric just in practice, right? Like here, good luck ordering steel from Swagger Shop if you tell it in metric. They're going to be give that to me in inches. I don't know what that is. So if you're in the UK, you I don't know. Maybe they've got millimeters there, but for rods for 3d printers we get them in millimeters because that's the standard thing that evolved uh, but we also can use 5 16s because that's only like 0 0.08 millimeter off the actual eight so answer is both until we start making stuff making our stuff and maybe we can then degenerate i prefer degenerating into one system it, if i were to have a choice i would go with with mks that's a universal system it has some logic, whereas the imperial system is kind of imperial from the top down. <laughs> they just right. came up with certain things that did make sense, like foot is close to a foot, you know, it makes sense. But when you try to interoperate, it doesn't make any sense. So anyway, um, so <laughs> I'm going to say like, huh, forget about it. Uh, it. Read it off the CAD. The answer here is 
if you read ARCAD, it will work for those windows we got. And you can maybe get more specific, but not in all cases. So you don't want to risk that because you bought yourself a $300 window and you have to take it back or rework your your design, which is hours. You know, or you do it in a field and you're just wasting time. Okay, rough openings of windows. Well, in our case, it happened to be simple, 36 by 42, and it was 36 by 60. Um, I, I remember that because that's actually simple to remember. Um, and that's in inches. What is the overhang of exterior plywood at bottom? Like how long does it hang down? It's like one inch, one and one eighth. Yeah, like 1.1, it's uh, 1 or 1.1, it doesn't really matter because uh, that's too small. But keep it at, try to keep it at like 1 and an A, which is about 1.1. What do you determine, how do you determine the location of bottom interior plywood blocking first floor? So there's there's still questions on that. Um, this is actually captured in our, like this current, all these working docs. The last three pages are always that because it's always something you kind of have to figure out. So look at the last three pages of all the, the working docs. Uh, we just documented that because, okay, that's always confusing. Take a look at the, look at that and read the numbers up there. So let's just settle on that. Um, and more specifically, interior plywood blocking <clears throat> uh, that we remember as I know for the top floor but how do you determine it yeah how do we determine that just just for the logic like we, we can read it read, read the numbers of the slides but how do you determine it uh, we'll just erase this what it well what is it now we, we can we can put it in there how do we determine it was the relevant question. Like, how do you know it's right? How do we start it? Where do we start measuring from? And what's the logic? Because that logic is you, you allows you channel. to there's yeah. utility channel, but what determines where the utility channel is for the first floor? We said we start the panel at the very top of the panel and we just found out where it ends at eight feet, because it's that's what it comes in. So you gotta say start at top and the answer is wherever the eight feet ends up will be the bottom of the blocking so that the plywood is against and is that reflected in, in the last slide the one of the last slides there Well, that's exterior, upper, so that means upper exterior. Blocking location lower, that's the utility channel. So we said, okay, you start at the top, you go 96 inches down to the bottom of the blocking. That's exactly where it's gonna end up. So that's the logic there. So just keep that. That's, this slide <coughs> is good. How do you determine the location of bottom and in interior plywood blocking on the second floor? How do we determine that? Well, we know those panels are only eight feet, so that means we have to cut the ply the interior plywood, right? So we have to de use logic otherwise to determine. Okay, where do we set the depth? Of width or height of the utility channel and we just said <clears throat> have it be about seven inches of space for wiring and that's how we said okay that's a good space if if you have that kind of a space if you screw at a distance of seven inches you won't like warp the plywood it's the span is low enough so let's see what what the slide says So 
second story interior we just said okay we're gonna have seven inches of clear space for the wires because that's that's pretty good and then if, if it's seven inches you're only screwing it at the top and bottom so that means it won't really warp on you seven inches is a short distance to span with plywood like that um, if you don't want to go too much more it's, you might start warping the plywood because it's not supported in the middle it's just spanning the top and bottom um, those 1.5 inch blocks so that's how we determine that um, So they determined there was seven inch space for wires. Six would work too, I mean six. That's get maybe maybe getting a little tight for wire space. And the answer is uh, eight point five inch spacer distance. We use spacers. So that spacer that we use to locate, so this, this answer of 8.5 inch spacer is specific to how we built it. Answer sp spacer was used. Okay, how do you determine location of exterior plywood blocking on the first floor? How do we determine that? We start with a drip edge at the bottom, and what do we do then? Yeah, yeah, we did that. Okay. We started with that, and then how do you find out what it is at the top? Where exactly is it going to be from there? What do we know? There's flashing. No, I mean the. No, what else? Does anyone have that logic? What do we say? The answer there is materials. It's B O M slash. CAD slash build instructions. The materials determine it. You got this eight foot piece. It's wherever it ends up. That's your blocking. But uh, the other piece of information you need to know it ends up at the middle of that blocking because there's more more plywood. The next sheet goes up. So you have to have enough. Like in a uh, interior ones, there is there was no more attachment of plywood below. So we we ran the plywood to the edge of that blocking. Here you go to the middle of the blocking. So wherever the middle of the blocking, um, that's where the panel ends up at the middle of the blocking. So that's the logic. But you know, if you're stuck, like you're out there, you're you're doing the work, and you're like, uh, well, where do we put that? We're you know, you're now building your panels. How do you verify that? You know, say you got a quality control to build. Say say you just outsourced. Uh, you know, say you got some, you hired somebody to build your panels because you, you got a house sale, right? You got the panels back, you know, you go through a little quality control. How would you tell? Well, you, you can tell readily by the location of the, where the plywood ends. And that'll be blatantly obvious, like either ends on the blocking or, or not, and it doesn't work because then your, your yeah, panel is just warped in and out. You know, it'll be just like floating there. It'll be warped out. Because always you want to have a panel screwed into something at its back. You can't have like loose edges just hanging in air. Which we're violating in the channel because the channel's already got just got the top and bottom supports, but it's a small span of only seven inches that is unsupported between the utility channel panels. Um, so how do you determine it? Consider 1.1 inch drip edge and blocking midpoint of blocking is located at edge at top edge of exterior panel um, siding panel that's how that is. So, like, if we have this information, what else are we missing? Like, say we wanted to, well, we have the house geometry and uh, basic wall. We're saying we've got two rooms upstairs. We've got a kitchen and a bathroom downstairs. 
Um, obviously, you have to have certain dimensions, like, well, what's a bathroom look like? What's the size of that? And uh, so you can, you have to locate that. Um, right now, from the opening of the staircase, you can determine. We basically found out, okay, yeah, there's two rooms, they're separated, and there's two doors there. You can pretty much logic where those things are, but they're, they're graphed out roughly here and then a sweet home 3d model has all that stuff in there so you can work from that as well um, but here maybe um so each of these things has got certain logics and actually on yesterday's logic I remember what we were doing let's actually take a look at for a second um, what we did yesterday on the location the, okay, here's our master. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we we're talking about this detail here. Like, where is this? And there's some more information. Like, when you see the skeleton here, there's more information here. But we were talking about. Okay, so this here's the door. Like this vertical seam here. That's going to be the door to the to the bedroom. So this is the second story, one bedroom here, one bedroom there. We have a separating wall that go, runs down the middle. First first panel there is the door. We were debating, well, do we put it like on this side or on that side? And actually, I think we concluded on this side. Is that so? Remember from yesterday? Right. It's it's a, it's joined with the wall on um, not there but you're talking the, about here on the edge of the yeah I think we, we put it here it to go there. oh to go there yeah. and why did we decide that because we want it there's, to be there's like more clearance for for the stairs it's not just yeah. the panel sticking out in that oh yeah it just opens it up a little bit more when you're actually out in the space where you, like when you come up the stairs so. yeah that's it's true you got more space and there was also a very compelling reason otherwise, and that is... Oh, the joists, right? That's yeah, fine. there's that, but also we consider, because the... So this is the first... Uh, let's see, it. maybe I'll just draw on top of this for... Uh, so the first, first door is going to be here. So I'll just draw the door in. So you got the door right there. Then you extrude that to 96 inches. So there's your door. Uh, if you want to cut that out, we cut it out mm, roughly. And that's our door. So you got the door, <clears throat> and what ha what disappeared there? How come that? Let's see, did, did that break? No, it's still there. Uh, so we've got that door there. There's another compelling reason why this door wants to be like this as opposed to otherwise. Because we have the second door here uh, to the other bedroom. So you can actually draw that in right here. So you got this. No, not here. On this side. You got this door that's going to end up right there it's going to be four feet wide he disappeared on me uh, what happened to me it might have this let's see what happened um, if I do that I wanted to draw that here there's your second door to the other bedroom stuff's disappearing on me here uh, I don't know why it's disappearing so I'm gonna run into some bugs maybe but the door's gonna be here so uh, the point I wanted to mention here is that if you look from the top uh, the second door is gonna be here now the wall then is gonna continue down this way 
if we made this panel here rest on the other side, then we would miss the attachment here. That's that's the actually compelling reason. So there's these studs here in a in a wall, uh, the actual second story wall. Okay, so there's one door, the other door uh, is going to be next to it here, right? So if we go take this wall back according to the floor plan, we need to end up on these joists to screw in the wall. If we move this panel to the left by three and a half inches, we'd miss these studs here, so we have to add more blocking. So that's the second reason why we want this door to be like this as opposed to inside. So there's more reasons. Uh, but if you know this direction, this door here, then you put another four foot panel for the other door and then make the walls go backwards. So the length of two walls determines that the, this direction here, then you have the door here that's located. It can only be one place if it's at the end of these walls and between the walls, between this and that. And then you can continue these walls here to this wall and determine that determines what these panels are. This is going to be a regular panel. This one's going to be shorter. And then for these ones here, you got the next next door here, and this one, and then that one. So right now we can pretty much figure out the entire upper side. We, can we maybe try divide that, and I can work with each of you to to uh, what I suggest is sharing just me walking you through it. Maybe we share a screen and we talk to each other, and then you can in this exercise you will make, I'll make sure that you know like all the basic steps. So that after this, yeah, you can just add modules readily to this kind of a design. I say you wanted to make a, you know, divide the room into another little room or something. Ah, you could do it. We know the basic logic behind that. Um, so, can we do that? Who wants to go first? Yeah. Okay, so which panel do we have available for work? which is missing and let's just get the full model right now so share your screen with me and let's see so let's see maybe hey let's go to uh, let's go to a Jitsi channel just just okay. you and me so just open up a window meet that jit that C slash open source ecology and then we'll just share the window share the screen there I'll share mine, you share yours. You, you, multiple people can share at the same time. Let's see. Open, share screen. There, share. So then you can look at, um, I can look at yours and I can pretty much guide you to, to do that. Okay. So I see yours, share your screen. So the first thing is which module is not done? That's question number one. Let's take one. I think the best place is to go to the CAD, whatever's read, it's not done. So we assume that nobody did anything on it. That's the general rule. Because, by the way, for anybody, like if you have done anything, like even starting with a positional pile, upload it immediately so that uh, we can know what's done. Now, are we still using the spreadsheet to keep track of if somebody's taken on a the actual CAD file. Um, Is that still in I use? I've been using it for other things that you can say. Yeah, I don't think most people have been using it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been using it. Let's see, so <coughs> regarding the panel, so let's see, let's see what sense we can make from that. Um, hmm, Jeff took on quite a bit. So, let's see if there's a free one. Well, I mean, let's take anything that's according to the... Mm. 
diagram is still free um, according to the spreadsheet. What do we have? Ken, are you taking on one? Um, this is taking on the uh, Well, taking any one of the undone modules in red, because I'm looking at the, I'm looking at 61 through 69 is pretty much open for anybody to do, but I know you have been working on something there. Have you? Or? 69. 65? Uh, physical build. Uh, but real build. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well. 69 should be. Okay, so. Uh, Ken, so. Uh, I'll put you there. I know Ken and Paul, you've been working on those. Then who? Who did the one that's already in the CAD? Is that one of us here? Who did the one that's. The interior, the one that appeared today, corrected as we spoke. No, not here. Okay, so, so but somebody did do that. Uh, so for that, I'd go to the, the CAD and see if that's in there. It's got to be in there somewhere. So it's starting at 61. Okay, so none of that. Free kind of sequence or Somebody's doing a panel workbench already. I love this. This is Coder Jeff. Huh. That's beauty. That's that's what we want. Yeah, that one looks like how he's cranking the nuts on us. Yeah. Um, let's see, what's he got? Does he actually have drop down of parts into that? Or I don't know what he has. Um, H2 panel, so what's the functionality in there? Oh, okay, so you've got menu options to put in panels somewhere. Mm, okay, cool. Maybe that will <laughs> fruit up to a fully capable thing. Yeah, it's awesome. Do we know who Coder Jeff is? No, I do know. Yeah. He's, he's, in the, he's, he's been in here for a while, but uh, um, I didn't really correspond with him. He didn't show up in a Discord? <laughs> he's in the Discord. Yeah, he's, he's in, in there now, actually. Sure. Okay. That's how I found out about him. Mm hmm.
Okay, I'll do the worry at. Let's see. So what what are you working on then? Um, I wanna add, I wanna position this. Oh, so which is that one? Um, That's the next one. Yeah. Um, uh huh. So the one correctly, it should go next to the yeah. purple, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, okay. Good. But so did you generate it or did you just copy I off just the? I just copied it. Okay. This is the, the. That's cool. Yeah. The eight foot simple interior. Yeah, okay. Definitely. So if you did that, I would ask, did you upload that to? Um, into. So that's number sixty-seven. Did, did you upload to sixty-seven? Um. So that. I'm doing the same thing, like the simple wall match, I'm just taking it and it copied. You're doing? 60, well, 60 and 61 are the same length, the ones that got come out um, to make a little hallway. Yeah. But then the, um, then it's 62. It's a little bit different. Yeah. Right, well, don't we have that? And it's a little bit smaller. Uh, I mean, it's going to be the same size, but like the doors are standard, so it Which? just looks like it's smaller on the uh, which one looks smaller? 62. But it's, it's going to be the same size. It's going to have to be the same size. Okay. Um, what, what are you referring to build cheat sheet? Do you mean just page 8? Um, so I'm looking in the build status right now and there's pictures of the cheat sheets copied in here. So it's, it should be the same. Alright, um, so why upload that before you start moving it around? Um, well, so you're doing it, uh, yeah, I mean, good practice to upload it so in the worst case, if your computer crashes, you don't lose it. <laughs> That's, I guess, the only use case. Yeah. Um, um, well, also, no, I think the reason there is let, if you upload it and somebody looks at this and they're working in real time, they know that, okay, don't take that. Somebody's already got that. So they would download it and find out where it is. And maybe as you're doing it, you, you'd find that you have to stop halfway because somebody beat you to it. I think that kind of duplication of effort is is all right. Mm -hmm. I mean, because then you can move on to the next thing. Right. Okay. You know, as soon as you find out it. Uh, but yeah, you'd have to have that file open. Um, in which case, like basically a self, like an auto updating GitHub thing where it's uploading in our video in real time. That's that would be one one simple thing we could do. It's realistic in terms of programming. Uh, just immediate viewability, but that's where we should have. Um, yeah, manually it could be done, but we want to automate that. I figured uh, if I put it in the right place here. Then it might be easier to upload it later. Uh, but whoever's editing it, like we're we're kind of assuming the the idea that you because you're gonna lose the sketches once you start moving it. Right. So if you have the original, you can still edit it. Was yours still editable, or you just copied it? I just copied it. So it had the sketches removed. Yeah, it already. Had. Right. Um, so that would be fine. Um, yeah, I guess. It's now my problem is mo actually moving. Uh, yeah, so let's take a look at that. Um, now so what you want to do is... To try right. So remember the first thing we talked about was that little window that which says auto right now. You want to click into hit one, two, or three on your screen, on your, so close that and hit one, two, or three. 
head out head out um oh mm -hmm. oh the, the key O. Yeah, I, I just there. Now hit one, two, or three. One. Yeah. Is that two? Yeah. Okay. Now you can go click the auto thing. Remember the auto. We have to tell it that we're in this plane. Mm -hmm. Go into the view plane. View. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And now you can catch it, and it'll move in this plane. Okay. I just uh, the eight foot. I just. I was able to export it separately from the whole entire file. It's um, it's in a different file format, but it's still accessible by FreeCAD. So I don't know if, uh, if that makes a difference. I'll yeah. Upload it to the uh, part library. Okay. So you can put it put it in roughly. Just just snap it in there, and then we can z maybe zoom in on a corner. So place it down. And then just uh, let's zoom in on the corner. So go into like that corner there and just zoom in as much as you can. And now you can put it in much more detail. Like just grab the corner. Okay. Because a lot of times you won't be able to snap things because there's nothing to snap to. Right. So you have to learn how to move things. So yeah, that's, that's good. So now, first of all, say you got to do a few things like upload this file. Mm -hmm. um, I'm looking where, where you I would save it so save it first as an individual file <coughs> okay. which means you you copy and paste it out of here into a new doc and, and save it as a new file it's a positionally correct module mm -hmm. paste it Yep, so you got it. It didn't appear, so go into the view and stand the view, so fiddle. Yep, so there you go. Um, save this file and upload it to. to what the six, what was the number? Um, number there was 67. So you got that one. Oh, what's going on there? Um, wait, what happened? That, that was just all not done. It says you uploaded it. I did. Let's see. Let's see what's it. So, let me see. So, let's download it. 67. Oh. And when was that? 13 July? Well, let me just download and see what's in there. Because I don't remember what's in there. 67. Oh, maybe I've got... Oh, yeah, I think I've got, like, a crappy incorrect version. Let's see. Yeah, that's all it is is a placeholder. So, yeah, yeah. upload it over to that. Yeah, it's 5K, so it's probably not detailed. Yeah, it's, it's a placeholder.
all right so it's 7k yep that's good and then upload then go to the master file and put it in there uh, first of all you want to yeah, go to the master file, master CAD file. Yeah. The first thing you want to do is upload, make sure that nobody did some work before you, so just check in okay. what's been done since you looked at it. <coughs> okay, so there's active work happening here. Um, oh man, yeah. So, looks like, do you know at which point did you upload? Um, download the last one? No. Okay, so you, you want to download the last one. And, w and add it to that one. Mm -hmm. Last question. Yeah. Um, I wonder if the external firewood on the number 69, mm -hmm. which is a bit shorter than the standard 42.5. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah, but this. It's got a utility channel. Yeah, well, what I mean is the width of the, uh, the stone plywood is 48. So you have to cut it, you have to cut it to fit the top of the... Um, For which module? Uh, 69. Which is so 69 is going to be interior plywood, so that's 3 it's plywood, but yeah, it's still... The, what I mean is uh, the, the, the width of the um, of 69 is, is 42 and a half. Yep. So you have to cut the plywood yep. to fit. Uh, I was trying to put in the car, I was trying to put the uh, plywood on the top of the panel. Uh, uh, yes. But it's, uh, it's actually <laughs> longer, wider. Uh, yeah, yeah, so you have to trim it down. Okay, which means uh, either cut it by a pocket or just do a, just do a sketch and yes. go from there. Yeah, I like working all on desktop so I don't have to search anywhere. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out where I left it. This is in the mess where it's in there. Question while this is being yeah. done. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, so, cool. in general, it seems the process is or can be to just copy existing panels, kind of move them, reposition them. Yeah, if they're the same, yep. In general, but there's enough var variety that you have to pay a lot of attention to what you're copying and not versus not. And th th these panels are going to differentiate once you add internals like. Such and as wiring, like outlet boxes and stuff. Which yeah, I think. Yeah. So where would I? Yep. Yeah. Sorry, this is a huge delay. Um. Uh, That's the question that is throwing off. Um, uh, so, what would I was? Should I check the Sweet Home files to, to check if they're internal things, or, or how would I know whether or not no, it's wise not. to copy a particular panel? Or well, at this, le at this level, no, you you're fine. You, you're fine to copy things if they're the same. So yeah. just check if somebody else is not working on it. That's the that's the main thing. So, like, which panel are you looking at? Like, which one do you want to do? You have to just pick one. So let's see where. Okay, so added sixty seven. Cool. So I want to take Yeah, it. no one in particular, just any of them. I'm just yeah, trying to figure out no. my process on the floor. 
yeah any of them that are still in red just take a, take that and maybe look into the spreadsheet the build status spreadsheet to make sure that nobody else is working on it uh, like for example 67 that was for Dundo so we, we got that yeah cool uh, so let me I want to download the final then right now check out what we got see if it all looks good Yeah, it looks good. Let me see. So, is so I'm looking at the master assembly and just quickly examining. Okay, are we consistent with the? Does it look good compared to the? Is every one of these uploaded? And what's missing? Okay, the I see the windows. Matt, if you want to insert the windows, the windows on the second floor should all be good to insert, pending those being simple files um, what's face binder what is that thing faces uh, do we need that there still be sketches no well just the location sketches within a in terms of final assembly yeah there's a couple of location but if they're repeating then they shouldn't be there okay. I, I think uh, first floor yeah they're getting repeated so th those should be eliminated um,
the window size and the second story exterior. Is that is that the thirty-four by sixty inches? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's a large window. Okay. It's a large window. Yeah, out of the uh, part menu. So just you can select a particular part and the whole thing and then just export that in one module. Yeah. Alright, so can you wanna let's see, so finally with Dundo. Let's see what we got there at the end of the day. So you, yeah, you kind of got some of the process down, pretty much. So I'm seeing the last one by Odundo. Joshua, you saying you uploaded the map to the master already? No, I uploaded the individual part. I created the individual part and mm -hmm. exported it so we have it. But um, I want to make copies of the one that's there and put 16 and 16 more together. Yeah, you don't need to export. You can just copy paste into a new document and save. Yeah. Fix the um, extended slide. Five eighths. Point six to five. Point six to five. Yep. Um. Okay. Look. Uh. Ken. So show me what you will share your screen. You can share on Discord, by the way. And in Discord, you can click share screen. Oh. If you are in the general voice chat. Sixty-nine. Okay. Good. Mm-hmm. Let's see. So you've got uh, what's going on there with the plywood? You no. For interior. Yeah, it looks more than like more than three and eighths of an inch. That interior is three eighths. Okay. 
I do not see, let's see, you only have, you don't have your windows. Yes. I'm not seeing that on your screen. It's oh, he's only sharing a single app. Yes, share, you share your entire yourself. screen. Okay. Uh, and you just stop the screen share. Yeah. So All right. So So you can go to the properties. Yeah, you can go into click on placement. at the property at the bottom. Towards the bottom left. Properties and then placement. Um, since you're close now, it's. I think it's. This is easy for precise positioning. So go zoom in onto one corner, say upper left corner. Now zoom in more. Then you can see exactly where you're moving it. So yeah, that's good. So now move it. Now it's you're going to probably need to raise it in Z by 1.5. Type in 1.5 there. Uh, what are you clicking on? So you're looking at. Ah. Uh, okay, this is not a simple object. Okay, you, you can't do that with um, until those are simple objects. So the only way you can do it is by making a copy of it. So right now you're working with an object that's got sketches. Click on pad 10, and you. And one of the first things you want to do is label your things, like so which is which. Cause okay. So label, label this. What is that? The sheeting? Let's so label it. Yeah. But there is no exterior panel. It's three eighths and interior. Those are interior walls. Uh, You're working on panel sixty nine. Yeah. yeah. That's inside. Yeah. Okay. There's no exterior sheeting on. Um, that's only on exterior. Okay. So what do you put on? No, interior okay. sheeting, which is three eighths. It's similar. It's like the stuff you see in in, in my house there. Okay. It's three three eighths inch. It's called beadboard. Same four by eight dimensions, okay. but thinner and interior. It's not rated for outdoor use. Okay, so this is interior ply. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Interior ply. What do you can call it? There. Label all your other other stuff too, so that it's clear. Sorry. Label all your other parts too. All right. Okay. So then that, that way, whenever you're working, you can readily see. And get rid of maybe close down your house assembly master. Yeah, there you go. So you can clearly see what you've got in front of you. Yes. So label that, so label it like left stud or right stud and stuff.
driver, she's the front here, and she's the back. There's going to be... Right now you haven't defined it, but... Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the docking is already to one side, so... Oh, it needs... So on the, those we have blocking on both sides, because both sides are going to... So that blocking oh. needs to extend through. Maybe that wasn't clear. Oh. Whenever you have a panel that's got two sides, that's interior, it's got two sides. Mm -hmm. It needs blocking to be extended through it. Oh, okay, so the blocking is not actually uh, two by two. It's going to be two by four in this case. Two by four. Yeah. Right. Um, so let's go just through the process of putting it. Have you ever put a panel into the house yet? Um, I did put in panel number eleven. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's go through the process. We because we the point is when you have your panel right now, mm. make a simple copy. So make sure you're saving all this and uploading the full stuff to the wiki. So you're never overwriting. And when you save, save the version with all the sketches. Um, upload that to the wiki. So, re so first rename it. <coughs> so you've got it. So maybe name name the other just just for the exercise. Re name all the things correctly. It's largely about file management. Like name it and put it up to the wiki. So you can go back to it later and edit at this level. But you can still put a placeholder into the final doc, which will be as simple as just. Yeah, let's see if you. Hmm. Maybe go through the process of. No, go through the process of correcting it. That's a good exercise too. So, because there's. But do save it and upload it to the wiki as the sort as the sixty, sixty nine. So save, save that on the wiki. Was that you putting in that thumbnail, or somebody else did that? Um, which thumbnail? On 69? Yeah. Okay, good. Good, so you got a file that you uploaded yesterday. So yeah, definitely update for today. Not yet. Not yet. This is that's extra. Like first, let's get the house up. Um, so we've got all the correct labels. So we're gonna change the blocking size. Uh, change it now. Or yeah. 
Yeah, so that we're actually working with what we think is the final file. Right, because you make all the changes in, the, in this file but if you make changes at this file, you're going to have to make it positionally correct again. Which is, if you make changes, you'd have to do it. So it's better to do all the changes now. So you're putting it into place once. Yep. No, no. Uh, no, no. Two by four is three and a half. Okay, but this is um, it's, it's uh, three and a half up, um, deep. Three deep, yes. Deep. Yeah, so yes. Isn't right, uh, it's a deep and and one point five high in the way you're, okay. you're looking at it. Kind of warning when I uploaded the last file. It's uh, too large, almost. Well, it, it's just a warning saying that it sh you shouldn't upload over a certain size. Ignore it and it'll go away. That? Ignore it and override it. No, I already uploaded it. I'm just saying yeah. I, I encountered the warning. We know. we have a limit of of one meg, which means that after that we we can say uh, part A and part B, or just go to with a complete file go to go to GitHub. Okay. I mean, you can still put it on the wiki, I think, maybe it is. Yeah, it'll limit it out at one meg, because yeah. just so, saving some memory. So, so to actually, um, it uh, means I need to extrude this um, So You do. Yeah. So, so one thing you can do is just click on the, the final object and change its height. So click yeah. on, so go to the model. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then left blocking, double click on it. Uh, on left blocking. Mm -hmm. And then it, right. you can do it right there. Okay. Now, do you have 1.5 for the height? Yes. Okay, well then you're good. But just do you note that, yeah, that's good, and do the same thing for the other ones. That's pretty pretty quick. Now remember that if you had a single blocking, it would be 1.75 because it's a 3.5 split in two. Blocking is 1.75, it's yeah. not 1.5. Yep. It's a split two by four. It's maybe a, maybe a rule we d document, and once again, going into the complete... Uh, bit depth of this design. <laughs> so I'm going to continue that doc to... Um, you know, cop, make a copy slide, duplicate slide, and continue with point number 25. So what is the height of standard single-sided blocking? And that's the answer is 1.75 inch. But before that, um, there's a question: Can can question is what is double-sided blocking? That's the first question. It's a piece of information. It's where you have walls on both sides of it, interior walls. Yes, yes.
Yep, so go into your... Well, you can't move it without making a copy of it first, so what you want to do is um, delete the actual object and you'll be left with a sketch and then move the sketch. Okay. Let's go through that process. Because that way, you cannot move the, the thing when it has a sketch. You'd have to make a copy. That's how FreeCAD works. Yeah. So, what you can do is click on the interior plywood and hit delete on it. Don't delete the sketch under it. Okay. Uh, click on. Show me your screen. Or no, I, I got your screen. There, there. Click on. Okay, you did that. So now the sketch appears. Okay. Right? So double click on the sketch. Okay. I'll zoom out. Make your frame transparent because you can't see the sketch. Make your frame uh, double select everything and do the visibility as because we can't see the sketch through now. So select like do your cursor and grab the whole thing or just grab all the parts in the part tree. Um, is it from, oh, from the wall Control A. Yeah. You can select all the parts within your part tree. Does it work? Oh. Doesn't work. Select all. Yeah, just do it. Just cl right click and make it all transparent. Mm -hmm. and hit the transparency to 70. Yeah, close. It's fine. Now you can see the sketch. Double click on the sketch. Can you see the sketch now? Yeah. You can see through. So zoom in on it and make it first move it correct to the correct position yeah, okay. in this face. Is it correct right now? Um, yeah, it looks correct. So so that that part is fine. So close and then go into the properties of the sketch. And the properties would be now move it over to what direction was that? That was the the x direction. Is that so? Yeah. Uh, x. Probably want to move the which arrow is into the page? It's x, right? Yeah. yeah. So move it in an x to. But go into click another view because you can't see where it is from the front, you don't know where it's going to move when you move it forward, right? Okay. So you got to see it from the side. Yeah. Uh, so Click one, two, or three. Mm -hmm. There. Uh, can you see the sketch? Double yeah. click on it. Or click on Yeah, if you can see the yeah. sketch, you're good. And then s change its X position so that it it's where you need it. So you've got this 1.1 yeah. point for some reason, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, but that's not so. Move that value. Try 121. Yeah, I did. So keep. Okay, so keep moving it in the right direction. Get rid of the one one two five. Okay. So it's get rid of the point one two five. It's confusing. So 120. Try 121, yeah. or the other direction, or is it 119? Yeah, that's about right. That's Okay, zoom in and see if you're right. Zoom in more. More, yeah. Yeah, and get it till you're right. So that would be 121.2. Point, point point 0.1. Point 0.15. It's about there, so just leave that.
and then then now do the pad, which is point um, point three seven five. The bottom will just be in line. Uh, yeah, it should. It should. That means double click on a sketch and make that happen within your sketch. So yeah, you see that it's not accurate. So change that. Double click on a sketch. Mm. Okay. But did you did you move it at the top? Yeah, it should because it's a rectangle. Uh, and it's a four by eight sheet. Well, no, not a four, but but eight. Four by eight by. Yeah, four point twenty two point five. Yeah, right. By eight feet. No, not eight feet. By by what? By um. Uh, 85.65 <laughs> uh, Okay, that's that sounds good to me. It's a, if you have the 8.5 gap on the bottom, right? Yeah. 8.5 or 10, depending where you're measuring from. That's right. That's good. So you're figuring out. You you basically were able to figure out um, the the distance of the the plywood. Yeah. But I see on top it, you lowered it a little bit, so you kind of you're off somewhere. Um, make it exact at the top, and let's look at it again. Make it exact, so we can troubleshoot if there's any actual. Uh, uh, you mean move the sketch? Yeah, but zoom in so you know where you. No, oh, zoom in. You can't see. Zoom into the upper left corner, and you can see exactly where you're at. You want to get good at zooming in and like corner, like super yeah, zoomed in, uh, so that my mouse isn't, uh, it's not cooperating. No. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I mean that corner looks quite good, but but that means. It means my original. Okay, measure the top and bottom of your panel, entire frame. Let's see what height you got there. The top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, do you know what that distance is? Yeah, it looks like I can't measure from this. Can't measure from here. Z close it. You want to close it? Measurement only occurs in there, yeah. So, so go from top to bottom. got for that number? Well, there's that little discrepancy, huh? Yeah, I mean, we we probably want to be using the pre-cut studs there because that's easier for us. And you've got what I'm seeing there. You've got eight foot full, so you should probably trim that by three eighths, no? Because um. we were working with pre-cut studs when mm -hmm. you were actually building it, so you have to reduce this. Yes. 
by three eighths? Because I'm looking, I'm reading your dimension. You've got ninety six. Yeah. Yeah. You want to reduce that? Okay. You understand that? That it's it's one point five on top and bottom. You got ninety two and five eighths. So it doesn't add up to ninety ninety six. It ends up three eighths under. So you got to reduce that. So start with the reducing that. Okay. Uh, I guess. Are you? Do you have pre-cut studs there? Correct length. I guess not. You use them as uh, as 93. Uh, yeah. uh, a little less. That'd be 92 and 5 eighths. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry, I think I have to just in the workshop. No, no. The workshop is good. We already did the the, the pre-cut studs bought off the shelf. Okay. Yeah. So re So fix that. Um. Uh, no sketches? I see. Oh, you can do... Yeah, you can edit the right mid. And then copy from that. Yeah, so I mean, so I have to delete the... Yes. Or you can cut off and trim it using the... In part design, you just pocket it 3 8 inch. It's easier. How do you do that? So you go... You click on a face and then click put on a sketch and then eat it with a pocket so yeah so click on a face of the the one you want to reduce don't select the whole object just click on a face mm -hmm. no no you're not on it because now it tells you which plane um, unclick that unclick this stud Zoom in, go to this, look at the side of it, make sure you're selecting one face. 
rotate a little bit. Just select the face you want to reduce. Yeah, now put a sketch on it. No, I don't, you clicked out of it. Thank you. Did you click out of it? Or, oh no, you're good. So put a, put a sketch on, put a square on it that's got a side of 3 eighths inch. Now is that, uh, yeah, okay. That's an easy way to do it. It's, you just gotta trim it down. It's like, it's, it corresponds to taking down a cut off saw and just cutting it off. Yeah, but the vertical side is going to be three, 3 eighths, just point three seven five. That's fine. Just just make that point three seven five. Z you got to write zero point. No, 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 no. Yeah. Uh, what are you doing? Are you editing the sketch of the? Form? I thought you were cutting off a piece of little trim, trimming a piece of that stud. Oh right. Okay. I see what You're you trimming mean. a piece of the oh, stud. Okay, the piece. Yeah. yeah. That kind of workflow is actually corresponds to reality because it's the same thing. You take a cut off saw and you trim it. So it's actually a useful workflow in ter terms of reality check uh, for build. So it's, it's uh, Zero point three two five. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a tiny thing, so move it to the bottom. Uh, to the top. Yeah. Okay. Drag it. I'm going to put your mouse and zoom in on it and drag it. Well, make it wider than the thing. Make it wider. You can drag a corner and, and extend that sketch. Can you can you go and touch one corner and Drag it. Okay, what happened to your mouse? How do you do that with a pad? Can you do a mouse? Sorry, I have no mouse, but it, it, it doesn't it, work. It, it does work sometimes. Sometimes it it's. Let's see if let's, let's troubleshoot that because.
think this is what I mean. That doesn't work. I need something more rough. last night, um, whenever that drain, water drained back, it was still staying, that water that drained out was still standing in there, so it raised the water level that was in there, so it's not, it's not adding anything to it. So I traced the line, I found a Google Doc that shows the uh, layout of the water, and I found the water hiding out by the swimming pool, and it was in a briar patch, so I weeded it all that up, but I can't find anything on the, on the back of the fence. Yeah, because it's very lights in the back is where it comes into the back, but that connection seems to be good. Or the location there, it's not. Uh, is there a valve? Is there a valve that that turns off the back of the house? Just at the back. <coughs> Just at the back. In the, in the ground, and that there's a little hole there. That, that the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I dug the leaves out of there, and then I didn't find the valve. Well, there's I mean, a bird box in the wooden frame. Mm -hmm. You can see that? You saw that? Mm -hmm. No valve in there. I didn't. Well, I didn't find the pipe, so it's probably just built up with soil. In there. Maybe the leaves are broke down. And you see that the cover that when you take it off, it yeah, under it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, there's dirt. So they, they could have. How deep is Is that three foot deep or is that just? It's like this. Yeah, I'm probably right at it then. I was scraping it with a shovel. Trying to. But there's a valve there. And is that turned off, I assume? So uh, we've got this valve out here by the swimming pool could be it. Uh, well, your said before the okay, so turn up your arm, and you know, right where it goes into the into your house and where it goes out. So it's under That's under uh, does that come up is that three foot under and then comes up in? I mean it's it's three foot under right in the house, but at the house it's it's not its surface. So it comes in at the surface, so then we just take it back down. I think across, like across the gravel there, it, it stays out outside. It's very under, like under uh, the straw. Mm -hmm. That's what it's at. Yeah. But it could be there. But you haven't, uh, you haven't tried adjusting the pressure right there. I haven't tried adjust, uh, adjusting it. But it, it's still it. it's still losing water regardless of the pressure pressure. So I took off that panel in the. In the house in the, the, the big bathroom, and there's two valves there, and that controls the water on that side of the house. Yeah, the mirrors are going to apply that not anywhere after the heater. So I turned off the valve behind the stove. I also turned off the valves in the big bathroom. 
I was going to open that valve on the stove and then see if it was still leaking. But when I went to check, I'm leaking even though the house is turned off. It could be somewhere between the connection to the high point. So there's a there's a hydrant and then the pressure regulator is connected to the hydrant and then PEX going into the house, PEX going this way. Yeah, and so here before the high pump regular I have to probably check that first make sure it's not there. Yeah, it's not there. I'm pretty certain it's not there. I mean, I've, I've got water. Well, I've, I've dug it out there, so it's right there in that little spot. Well, I don't yeah, know. but you can't see under the high beam thing. You can't see under the high beam thing. That's going to be... Pressure regulator mm -hmm. and <coughs> a hydrant truck there. Mm -hmm. So, but this water, whenever there's a weep hole on the other side of, of this, mm -hmm. just above, so this water is from that weep hole mm -hmm. draining in there, and it, the water level didn't change because it's all clean down there. It doesn't really have any place to go too much. So, so I'm thinking there's not a leak right there because if, if there was, it would raise this water level. That's a very small That's the whole point about this. We don't know what's underneath there. It could be just draining right down the gravel. And so this is all filled. It's actually, this is actually the river already. It's just draining down because that's filled with the gravel. How far back was the gravel doing? Was it just right there at the hydrant? Or I think we put gravel in. Um, forget how much gravel we put in. But, I mean, unless we... Well... <laughs> how much energy does it take to flow? I mean, we can make the assumption, okay, it looks like maybe it's not there. But we're not sure of that, and then we'd be. Uh, what I'm afraid of is that we're now digging all the other places, and it turns out it actually is here, either at the hydro, like what, whatever the detail that we're not seeing mm -hmm. right there, it could be there. So for that far away, to me, it makes sense that we just finish it up and say, no, it's absolutely not here. We need to get a backhoe and dig up all the other places, because yeah. if that's the case, we need to pretty much dig up um, where the junction is to your house, which we and get you an approximation of exactly. You can kind of trace it back a little bit. Mm -hmm. I have some idea of what that is, but we, I mean, if that's that, then we really need to get that excavated. Yeah. But here, we, I think what we really want to do is make sure it's not there because it makes the walking through. So it's a little bit of work to get it. No, I that's I think we should. Cause that's about that far down, and it took me about three hours to dig a hole. How much more do we need to do to, to, uh, to extract well, what's, what's well, in it? Probably need to go about twice that big. Mm -hmm. Well, do we have a postal digger? I can't find one. But just a uh, postal just digger for one? Yeah, just to remove the dirt. Uh, we did. Uh, we could ask Catherine if we had one. I'm not sure where it is right now. Because maybe I could take a postal digger mm -hmm. and go down over here to the side and give a place for that water to go to drain and then I can see if there's any water because I got to get below that in order to see yeah. and, and that's the problem was getting below it so I was on my belly upside well, down nice and stick real quick. Yeah, okay. so I don't know if it's in there or not but Uh, who can create channels in there? Uh, I think I can create channels. Yeah, like a design uh, channel. 
A what? A channel for design theory. Because they're clogging up the, uh, <laughs> the main channel with all this ivory tower talk. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, I didn't even realize how much uh, got put in here. I was suffering until this mouse came in the mail yesterday. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> Were you trying, trying, to, trying to three finger? Yeah. It? Oh <laughs> my god. <laughs> <laughs> yesterday he was telling me right click the pan, and I'm like, I'm trying it. It's not working. <laughs> two finger click and grab yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs>
should have asked him if I could get some chicken. You can, I mean, you need raised chicken. There's chicken houses at the greenhouse. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Sheesh. You used to raise chicken. You think if I just had chicken delivered and didn't say anything, it wouldn't be a big deal? Well, where would you add it? Uh, out here. No, no, I mean, where would you, would you tell Jeff, would you add it to the Walmart list? No, 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 no. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, that's a side project. And how do I order chicken? How do I get chickens delivered? That's we another question. A lot of Parker neighbors, I bet if we, like, just, you know, walk over to the farm over and be like, hey, can we have a few chickens? Yeah. What's your scrub burned out chickens? Fresh eggs. Fresh quality. But the so the yolk is gonna be so orange. You think it's artificial. You're right, like pasture pasture uh, free eggs that yeah. are super orange. They taste good. <laughs> but I've never actually raised chickens, so I don't know what I'm getting myself into. <laughs> <laughs> Chickens kill fleas and ticks and go away. Yeah. So much upside. <laughs> oh, they do. <laughs> they eat ticks. Right? Yeah. I wonder why chickens don't eat these. They eat ticks off of each other. Maybe. Well, I don't know. Grooming. Grooming beer. Well, if someone does have a rooster, right? If anyone's up early, like, oh no, I'm thinking it up. Arizona, one of my neighbors had a rooster and that's you know, five or six in the curl. But really far away sometimes. Like it's still the back to six or But here I don't hear anyone. I don't hear roosters going. So. It's just the cow and the coyotes at, at night. Those coyotes are unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. The, the and noises. Playing in the forest like all night. Good lord. Yeah, they they howl like supernatural creatures. Yeah. No. I guess we're the city folk. You know, so we've never heard plans. I understand why people just shoot them even if they're not a problem. They probably just, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so they call them the police for the noise ordinance and just to shoot you for violating it. So that's uh, citizens taking law in their well, we're all out here.
if if we got chickens, the coyotes would definitely come closer. <laughs> <laughs> I think they are not attack humans, they're pretty scared of humans. Yeah. Like, they would get chickens. Yeah, they're gonna, in the middle of the night, they're gonna want some chicken. Well, that's why... It's not a KFC, man. <laughs> <laughs> the, the door of the greenhouse is a, a, a one-way door so the chickens can get out. And then in Arduino, it can just open them so they can get back in during the day, like before nightfall. And then they're not closing the lights and the coyotes couldn't get in. No. But you're right, maybe it's not chicken. No. There's fried chicken, I'd be out there, I'd be like, where's the Yeah, I know. There's some chicken stretch, where's that? Sleepwalking out there. Has anybody ever butchered a chicken? No, I don't, I don't know if I can do it. I mean, I, I can do it, but I don't know Yeah. You've done it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I, I would have bet Ken. We'll do it together. <laughs> and Ken will be good. So we build a chicken guillotine first, right? Oh, <laughs> man. And then we pronounce the chicken enemy of the people and for your crimes and bullshit. Yeah. It could be more, you know, sacrificial. Nowhere have, have a ceremony, yeah. yeah.
bar, I like all your, your chat. What happened? On the uh, design. So we're talking about scans, generated design. It's not for selling names. Ivory, <laughs> ivory, serious ivory power <laughs> discussion. We <laughs> publish a paper. Uh, we only want publication ready text in that channel. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that is interesting. Too. Yeah. The, the two doors, like, when you, you the Yeah, when you walk up the stairs. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I don't like it, but... It is a small house. I guess that... Well, I don't... I still don't think that's an excuse. But, yeah, it, it's very restrictive to me. It makes me feel like I'm in, like, Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> Oh wait, you're saying that when you right get to the top of the staircase, yeah. it's just two doors. Yeah. Which, there's no common space. Yeah. I see. I thought you meant there were two out, outside facing doors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I see. Yeah. Because <laughs> then I was like, where do those doors go? Like, <laughs> yep. Like you said, more I'll Alice. Like, yes, just more just Alice in Wonderland. Yeah, I'll just like the <clears throat> That's right. I put the wrong thing. Yep, exactly. That's <laughs> <laughs> not our <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> That's cool. Well, he's going to reuse round dirt. Sure, anyway. true, but, you know. Yeah. Um, well, she's yeah, that's a good point, Wes. I was going to use round dirt anyway. And also, you know, maybe I'll incorporate open design. Just a, a little bit of toxic post versus a, just a poison the whole part. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Why are you building this two million to make sustainable and affordable three for the Okay. Except the market size. The market size for three No, I just got twenty two million to you know, continue on the project. Get a funder. Run a funder. Oh, you case study. Yeah, I could tell you. The company got twenty two million in funding. Yeah. Uh, where does this dust go? What do we have here? There we go.
built structure. There's a lot of problems with 3D printed homes right now. Somebody will figure it out. Yeah. Last time I looked at it, like a year ago, I wasn't impressed. Uh, I think like many times anyone puts themselves out there, everyone else is watching. And then someone else takes their work and tries to take it further. Yeah. You know, less money. It's <laughs> <laughs> a good, good start. There's a company in Chattanooga doing 3D printing structures. Basically. They um, they didn't try to come up with their own uh, technology completely. They got KUKA robots, the kinds that you use in auto manufacturing, mm -hmm. and so it was easier for them to get people um, who were used to programming those robots. And they've started making structures. They're actually they've actually put up these structures and they're up to code and all that. A lot of I think they put statues at first, and then they 3D printed one building for a, a credit union. Yeah. Oh, so it's already being used by a real customer. Yeah. What are they using for 3D printing? I think it's uh, I think it's cement. Oh yeah, it says uh, it first 3D printed building facade. It's a building facade. Oh. oh. My heart is broken. Well, it's a step. I was going to say Chattanooga was first. <laughs> oh, I mean, they still are, and it's a good looking building facade. Right? It's, it's like a wavy, sweepy approach. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I like how they didn't try to reinvent the wheel like some other companies. Yeah, I think it's just a wavy pattern on the front. It looks amazing. Yeah. 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 It's just not the structural part. Are you trying to give yourself more reasons to go to Chattanooga? I, I've go already on? got all the reasons in the world. I don't need any more. Okay, so he's going to be out hitchhiking. Okay. Hitchhiking yeah. out of here. Oh, oh man. Stay over. Oh, man. Who's Only doing, hours away. Who's doing coke? I don't know. Yeah, it's toast. Like, uh, a toast. <laughs> <laughs> to, a toast to, to a design channel. <laughs> <laughs> Toastmasters, you have to each get up and give a short and talk to a five minute speech about cat. Yeah. What does cat mean to you? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you have the kind of, you try the kind of work that I show you. Well, okay. the kind of work that you try it out. It's really, uh, so for all the time that we spent building the modules individually and copying them, just clicking, it's there. Oh yeah, you can clear chest. Yeah, then it works. I can't get the other ones that are 
built already to work though, like the piping and the uh, 3D printer one. Well, you can, well, all you can do is just like press one of the pre made buttons that's like 9 foot exterior, 8 foot exterior, 9 foot interior, and you choose the one that's closest and you modify the studs. Yeah, yeah, that, that part's, this part's good. I saw that in the structure. It's, it's the other two that are that were built previously. Like there's there's an error in the code somewhere in the uh, the piping for the plumbing. I don't think there's any code for piping. I think it's all just like studs and top plates. No, there is. There's, there's there's a workbench for it. It's just oh, it's on it's just in a wiki somewhere. It's a different workbench. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just trying to get all the workbenches that we had. And put it in. Yeah. So, I mean, you can fix. You can fix it. It's not legit how we can it. It is, so I'll just see what the last uh I think they're just like two miles, but so uh, definitely like so you can get that credit. Yeah, I'll check it out. He also may be really young. He may be like a teenager or something. Oh well I'll I'll have to look and see what the last something Is anybody using OSC money? I am. I am for a free pad six. So I can do compatible. Like I can try and try. I I just I created a dual boot and everything, and I'm still not using it just because oh. all the hassle of logging into email and all that stuff. It's a big yeah. step. <laughs> and how did the um, virtual box go last night? Did it finish? Yeah, it did finish. Uh, but now I can't see the other. And see this or anything I plug in. Otherwise, you mean inside of OSC Linux? Yeah. Yeah. So you in VirtualBox you have to. Well, first you have to install this care package from Steve Jobs. And then mm -hmm. also, mm -hmm. um, how do you get to see this uh, You have to download it. So if you want it inside of OSC Linux, you can. But I I only use OSC Linux for a free cut. Oh, Everything oh, else I do outside of it. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's just me, but you can do whatever you, you no, want. No, that makes sense, sense because it's quite complicated to download it into Linux. I mean, you can, but it's it's already slower inside, and the image is already like 50 gigabytes or 42 yeah. gigabytes, and so that's uh, okay. it's too much for me. All oh, right. That's a, that's a but I will show you how to share files. It's useful to have a folder that's shared that's between, between right. your Mac OS oh, okay. and then uh, OS Linux. When you save the file in CAD and OS Linux, you can still access it in the Mac and you can upload it. All right. Yeah, so I, I'll show you how to do that. Because it keeps um, crashing. Keeps uh, your Mac or virtual yeah. box? Uh, no, my Mac. It's not called crashing, it's called updating. <laughs> Until the final update, when it's called buying in. Is this a <laughs> sandwich time? I see. You're going to take that toast at Western.
Can I use the mouse again? Thank you. So you probably don't know if you... Like four times. Probably, uh, see if we could get you on Linux 1.0. I'll, I'll bring the... Does anyone here have Linux 1.0 downloaded as a USB? Nobody? I can bring one down tomorrow or later. I'll give you one after lunch. Mm. Okay. Prince, you want to try it? You want to try a, an exercise of what you're working on? Yeah. Okay, so let's see where you're at. Let's share the screen and So which one were you working on? Um, that <laughs> short wall See anyone claim that, right? No. And that is number fifty-nine. Is that? Did you end up doing 57? I'm s no, that, that was just in real life. Okay, so 59 sounds like that's game. Ken, you didn't do 59, did you? No. Okay, so we're, we're good. Mm -hmm. Ninety-five. Um, let's see. Uh, for the vertical, yep. shorter than that because we got top and bottom plate, right? So we, we use the pre-cut length, which is 90, 92 and five eighths. So if we're, if we're getting an eight-foot module, we got to use the pre-cut, right? And five eighths, which would be sitting on top of the bottom plate. Um, What am I looking at? I'm looking at XZ. So what's the left to right distance on the bottom plate? Um, somewhere around 24. Close down this one so that you're not confused by it. Uh, so okay, so you got so one of the things is label things. So um, 
we're going to put the screen more easy here. Um, 23 inches. Uh, 23? Yeah, 23 by 25. Yeah, 23 by 25. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. That's assembly. Assembly, okay. Let me take a look at that one because I thought it was a little longer than that. 